Welcome everyone to another edition of Drunk Agile. And this is always Nisha. Say hello to everyone, Nisha. Good girl. Okay. And when Nisha, Don't of move. course. Don't move. Good girl. <laughs> and of course, um, with us as always, we get um, Pratik Singh. My name is Andrew Bacanti. Welcome to this week's episode. Pratik, what are you drinking? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm with the Elijah Craig Pal Proof. Uh, uh, one of my favorite bourbons. It is 62.4%. So we're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're under the threshold. Uh, I'm I'm cheating a little bit this week. Uh, I've actually got got a rosé. Uh, don't don't ask me which one. It was one of the ones left over from this weekend's festivities. Uh, it was one of the six we, we opened, and you know. Hey, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not I'm not you know I'm not I'm not fibbing. Um, but it was what 90, 90 degrees here today or something like that. And I don't care what anybody yeah. says. When it's ninety degrees, it's it's rosé weather. So, um, so cheers, everyone. Thanks thanks for joining us. I'm not, we're going to talk about a topic, is, is, again, it's one of these topics I think that we talk about all the time, but we never really hit head on. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, uh, this is this idea of using flow metrics with Scrum. Um, certainly is flow metrics outside of a Kanban implementation, but, but most uh, specifically Scrum. Now, I think, I think I'm on the record and Pratik may be on the record for this too, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, I'm on the record as saying if if I was starting out brand new with it with an agile team, right, and I, I could choose whatever whatever I wanted, um, I, I almost certainly would not choose Scrum. I just I just wouldn't. That's just personal preference. That's just a bias. That that's not to say that Scrum is evil. That's not to say if you're doing Scrum that you're doing it wrong. That's uh, that's what I'm saying. That, that's just personal preference. But what I would say is that if you are if you are doing Scrum for whatever reason, maybe you're forced into it, you know, um, you know, maybe this is what your organize, organization has chosen, whatever. But if you are um, forced to do Scrum, there, there's actually a lot of lot of good things about Scrum that kind of open the door to you to be a little bit more successful with it. And that's what we really want to explore tonight. So, um, Pratik, can you can you kick us off with um, with talking about specifically how uh, one of those doors that is open to us is the use of flow metrics. Yeah, and that's, this is, this is I, I like the way you put that, the door that's open because Scrum does a pretty good job of saying, we are explicitly not closing doors. <laughs> We're explicitly, this is, this is a minimum viable framework, add on whatever you need to add on to it in order to be successful. And the thing that has traditionally been associated with Kanban um, is flow metrics. Uh, the, the metrics of flow that help a team inspect and adapt their process to deliver value faster, all that fun stuff. Uh, those flow metrics are definitely one of those add-on practices that can help you improve your Scrum by leaps and bounds, at least in my opinion. Yep. Now, we, we probably should, what we should probably hit head on, you know, very quickly is there are a lot of metrics that are assumed to be part of the Scrum framework that just that just are not. And are not and never have been, right? And I think that this is one thing that we've talked about several, several yeah. times before. Um, a lot of people think the story points are, you know, a you know, a concrete part of Scrum. They are not, never yeah. have been. Velocity, tracking velocity, story points for sprint, concrete me metric of Scrum is not, never has been. The whole plan versus actual, you know, that there, there's that yeah. I forget what that metric is called. Some some say do, say do. What say I, do. I know, what, whatever say. it is. Okay. Um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever is again not part of Scrum. That one I'm not sure, but I'm I'm guessing never has been, has been either. So, uh, you know, I, maybe you felt handcuffed by you know using the, these types of things, but flow metrics can maybe unshackle you if that's you know if if, yeah. if that's what we want to say. Um, can we talk about how you know maybe some of the ways? Uh, we you know there's no way we'll be able to cover all of this in yeah. um, in a whole episode, but. Uh, well, let's 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 talk about let's talk about our favorite our, our favorite metric of flow is um, aging aging work, work item age. It's 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 the work in progress age. It's how old each item is on your board. And for example, that particular metric um, is extremely useful on a daily basis when you're running your daily scrum to talk about this particular thing has aged to 10 days. Meanwhile, we usually get things done in five days or less. Something's gone really, really wrong. What do we need to do about this? What do we as a team? 
how do what is the plan that we as a team come up with to handle this problem today it 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 it, it uh, enhances the the event quite a bit by making it more objective and centered rather than the subjective thing of hey how's everything going is everything on track so, yeah. it's it, and it brings us back to one of those things it's uh, while while the while the three questions used to be uh, mentioned in the Scrum Guide. This latest edition of the Scrum Guide has eliminated them altogether, which which is a wonderful thing. So it is perfectly valid to run your daily Scrum and just look at aging. Hopefully, aging in conjunction to a com with with a Kanban board. But that's that's a again that's a different topic. But yeah, there's there's nothing to stop you if you're doing Scrum to run your daily Scrum just based off of look on looking at aging. Let's let's pick another event just just quickly. I guess kind of quickly mm, run through these. Let's say retrospectives. Sure. Nisha moved. Nisha moved. Oh, oh. she's getting excited. <laughs> let's, let's say let, let's say retrospectives. Retrospectives is are another place where uh, usually the conversation ends up being very subjective. It's you know what are uh, what did one of our trainers introduce us something sailboat? I think it was sailboat. What are our anchors and what are the winds in your sail and uh, subjective. Essentially, it's like, hey, well, what's what's working for us? What's not working for us? Which is a great conversation to have. What's working for us and what's not working for us? But what if we grounded that in some sort of data, some metrics that we were collecting? And this is where something like cycle time would be a great thing to look at. Why are things taking too long? Why are things? Why is this group of things? Why did they get done so quickly? What went on? What what can we deduce from from our data? And, and talk about how do we change things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and again, nothing nothing in the Scrum Guide that says you can't look at, at cycle time. It, for me, it's it's one of those really powerful metrics. If if we're really, you know, trying to inspect and adapt and trying to improve as a team, you know, how, how we get things done, improve as a team, uh, I, I don't know how we could not look at, well, how long has it taken us to get stuff done in the past? And what's what's been the causes of maybe things taking too long or, or whatever? And are there some changes that we might implement, uh, you know, going forward, you know, in the next sprint and, and beyond? Okay, great. Retrospective. Let's throw out another one. Mm, what about, well, let's talk about planning. You know, everyone's favorite. Why not? Where we all get together and sit around at three hours and just talk to each other. Um, but uh, sprint planning is another place where uh, hopefully something like uh, Monte Carlo simulation that uses throughput, something of something of that matter can 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 help shortcut the conversation of how much work can we do, so we can have the more important conversation of okay, how do we get started? Right. Uh, that we 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 we've spent more time uh, figuring out all right, how we're going to attack the problems rather than how many problems we're going to attack. Right. For, for those of you who do sprint planning and get, and get mired in the minutia of estimating every single PBI that you, you pull in and then the endless debates around, well, you know, does does this PBI fit or does this group of PBIs fit? And, you know, and, and then, of course, it ends up in at pistols at 50 paces or, you know, or whatever. Um, check out Monte Carlo simulation because Monte Carlo simulation is, is one of those tools that can... Um, not only shortcut that conversation, you can literally find out how many how many PBIs you can get done in a sprint in less than a minute. Probably less than a minute, probably, probably even much, if Pratik's doing it, much, much quicker than that. Um, not only not only shortcut the conversation, but give you a much better answer and a, you know a, a much better understanding uh, you know of your risk associated with certain outcomes that that's coming out of your planning. Yeah, yeah and and we're not. We're not saying that this conversation that conversation is not important because there is a different conversation that's important. You just mentioned the key word risk. How much risk we are willing to take is a much more important conversation than how many story points is this thing. Yeah, it's just a two and or three want, or three or five. Yeah. Yeah, um, we want to shortcut that conversation of how many things we can get done and how big these things are, and instead have the conversation: how much risk are we taking on? And what value can we deliver to our customers based on the risk we're taking on? Yep. Which is a nice segue into the review. And I'll, I'll, I'll kick us off for this Go one, for if, if, that, if that's okay. <laughs> um, because 
you know, Monte Carlo simulation is one of those things that we can look at a review is like, based on what we've done in this last sprint, probably even based on what we've done in the last several sprints, how does that affect, you know, any release plans that we might have in come up? How does that affect our risk profile for what we want to work on going forward? Um, and how, how might we model that using Monte Carlo simulation in our conversation with our stakeholders and our conversations with our customers about how our plans might need to be tweaked based based on those learnings and based on that 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 new understanding that we gained by just having completed x amount of work it's it, it, it's it's a powerful powerful conversation starter i think as as you talked about yeah and, and and you can literally have those conversations with your stakeholders in real time talking about these are look this is how the risk profile is oh you want to do that okay this is how the risk profile changes based on that yep. you literally have an open transparent conversation with your stakeholders there's, yeah, there's no reason. I mean, that's a great point. I mean, you, you you did this all the time. There's no reason why you can't be updating the model right then and there in the meeting with your stakeholders to talk about uh, to talk about different scenarios. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, we've you know we've we've kind of fast forwarded through all the events and, 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 and you know and some of the flow mats. So we've you know we've talked about aging. We've talked about uh, you know cycle time. We've talked about throughput. We, we've talked about various techniques that you you can um, you know to put all those together. I don't know some you know so, so, some final thoughts so we we can wrap this this episode up. Yeah, I, one of the things I definitely mentioned is traditionally people have looked at these flow metrics as Kanban metrics, and it's nothing could be farther from the truth. That, yes, Kanban uses these metrics quite a bit. We it's in the they're in the Kanban guide, but they're not Kanban metrics. They have existed since before Kanban existed almost. Well since the modern implementations of Kanban existed. And there is anywhere there is a process that exists which has things that come into it and things that leave it, these flow metrics exist. They, they, they just do. So whether you're a Scrum team, an XP team, a Kanban team, these flow metrics exist. Just because they have been traditionally associated with Kanban and you are a Scrum team doesn't mean you leave them to the side and don't pay attention to them. They will actually help you quite a bit. Um, I think I think we in the Agile community have done a disservice to Scrum teams by separating these out as as being Kanban metrics. A, sh a shout out. I mean, in terms of building those bridges and, and getting the word out, just quick quick shout out to to you know to Scrum.org who recognized this you know back in 2016 2017 uh, by by putting out the professional Scrum with Kanban class. You know, we trying to continue that tradition with with ProKanban.org. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a new class that we have out that we'll maybe talk about here um, in just a second. But it's not just it's not just Scrum.org and ProKanban.org yeah. talking about this stuff anymore, is it, Pretty? Yeah, we're, we're, it's, it's it's fun. It's like we we we've we started building these bridges, and now uh, it's it's great to see other other organizations that were pretty say anti Scrum who have come in and started saying, oh, we're going to do a Scrum with, with Kanban class. And uh, it's, 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 it's great to see that happen, that, you know, this, 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 uh, this journey that we started on, uh, other people are following us on that. that, that that's great to see. Yep. So if you're interested, like I said, we, we really, we, um, you know, we just uh, scratch the surface of the tip of the iceberg. I don't know how many, however, how many metaphors we can throw in there. You just scratched the iceberg. <laughs> in terms of, uh, in terms of, if you are a Scrum team and you want to get more out of your, out of your Scrum implementation, Pratik's talked a lot recently about how to use, uh, maybe uh, how flow metrics can help you uh, avoid, you know, zombie Scrum implementations. You know, uh, Ryan Ripley and Todd Miller talk. Uh, about flow metrics a lot when they talk about you know fixing your scrum so you know if if you're one of these teams that is in that situation you maybe maybe doing scrum can't get quite not getting quite out of it what you what you think you can or maybe you just want to explore some some different ideas some some different alternatives uh in, in terms of how to improve uh come shameless plug come check out what we're doing at, at, at procombun.org um Pratik and i may be doing um it's an applying Applying flow, flow metrics, metrics for, scrum. for scrum. Yeah, um, that that's the new class that we've just launched. So probably coming to a interwebs near you. Um, Pratik will probably Pratik and I will probably be throwing that out. Just uh, if anybody's interested, please please drop us a line. We'll try to put some more more information about it in the description. Um, do you have a final word, Pratik, or should we just wrap it up for? for uh, I'll just add to that. Uh, we, if you are interested in in this being uh, in an in person class. 
Dan and I do have one scheduled uh, in London in May. So, you know, London's beautiful in May. If you want to take a little take a little flight or show up in London in May, Dan and I are doing an, uh, applying flow metrics for Strum class there. Oh, yeah. R remind me to put the link to that in the description. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember to do that. Um, okay, so there's a lot, a lot of information we'll hopefully be throwing in this in, in this description. As always, we'd love to hear from you if you have any thoughts, if you have any comments uh, about this or any other topics that we've talked about, please uh, please let us know. Um, in the meantime, for Nisha, who is twitching, you know, she only twitches when it's time for us to go. So for Nisha, for Pratik, my name is Daniel Vacanti. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you in the next episode. Good night, everyone.